Hey everybody, it's Summer, and today we're gonna be talking about what is the best pet snake. Some people might tell you that it's a ball python, some might say it's a corn snake, or a hognose snake, or a boa constrictor, and they may be right or they may be wrong. So let's try to figure out how we can determine what the best snake is for us and why. So first things first, we need to kind of dissect what makes something a good beginner snake or a good pet snake and why some species tend to be recommended more than others. And I think the perception tends to be that these species are easier to care for. And it's kind of correct, but also kind of not. It's not so much that they're easier to care for than majority of other snake species. It's just that they're harder to kill. So basically, these animals tend to be species that have been bred for multiple generations in captivity, and that means that they have become really acclimated to captive conditions. They're gonna be more forgiving of husbandry errors. They're not just gonna drop dead the second that something is a little bit off, right? Another quality that we're looking for when we're thinking about beginner snakes or pet snakes is animals that are easy to work with, maybe more handleable or have good temperaments, and again, being bred for tons and tons of generations in captivity is gonna lend itself to animals that are a little bit more manageable and easy to work with, right? So the further you get away from wild caught, generally, the better the temperaments of the animals start to become, again, as they become more acclimated to captive care. This also means that they're usually really good eaters, so they'll readily accept the commercially available rodents and other prey items that are easy to get for new keepers. Although some species that are commonly recommended for beginners actually are kind of picky compared to a lot of other species, so that's a bit of a strange one. Another characteristic that comes up when people are recommending beginner animals is size, so people wanna suggest animals that majority of owners would be able to successfully manage and house. And last but not least, we're thinking about the availability of the animal. Are there good quality captive bred individuals readily available in the hobby? Uh, what's the price point like? Can most people afford it? Would they be willing to pay that much for a snake? So those are some of the aspects that we're judging when we're trying to determine what's gonna be a good beginner animal or a good pet for somebody. But in my opinion, it's a little bit problematic to label certain animals as beginner pets or good first snakes. It's implying that the animal is a level one animal. And you know, so let's say that you, you're, you're getting into the hobby. Well, you have to start here. So you wanna get a snake, okay, you start here, and then once you master that, then you can get something else that you want. But animals shouldn't be seen as stepping stones or training wheels for other animals, right? They are a lifelong commitment, or that animal's life anyway. You know, and these animals can live 25, 30, 40 years. So when you get a pet, it shouldn't be something that you're thinking, okay, I've got to learn how to take care of this, kind of pass that test, and then I can move on to bigger and better things. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter how easy to care for or hard to kill something is, if it's not the animal that you want, it's not gonna be a good pet for you. It's not gonna be the best beginner snake because it's not really what you wanted. So now let's talk about how we figure out what we do want to determine what is gonna be the best pet for us. Unfortunately, we do have to start with our budget. We have to make sure that we're going to be able to financially provide for the animal. That means not just the cost of the animal upfront, but the cost of caging, the cost of heating and lighting, the cost of food, cost of husbandry supplies like bedding, disinfectants, and then also you have to think about if you're getting a baby animal, how big that animal is gonna get and the enclosure that it will one day need as an adult and how much that's going to cost and make sure right now that you're going to be able to afford that. And once you've figured out your numbers and made sure that you're going to be able to take care of this pet, you need to think about your lifestyle. How is the animal going to fit into your lifestyle? In a literal sense, how much space in your house are you willing to give up? Maybe you can afford you know, a 20 foot cage, but do you have 20 feet in your house that you can devote to a cage? If you have 20 feet in your house that you can devote, is your mom gonna care or your brother or your husband or whoever you live with? Are they gonna be okay with you giving up 20 square feet in your house? Make sure that you're not just thinking of the baby cage, but the adult cage. Are you going to have room to house the animal as an adult? Then you have to think about your time. How much time are you willing to devote to caring for the animal? And I'll be honest with you, most snakes are really low maintenance compared to 99% of other pets that you could have, but some animals that have more particular husbandry requirements will require a little bit more maintenance because you'll need to be checking on them a lot to make sure that things are in the right balance. Additionally, if you have a lifestyle where you travel a lot for work or maybe you're in the military and there's the possibility you'll get deployed, 
I don't know what you have going on, but you need to think about if I'm gone for a long period of time, do I have somebody that can come take care of it? If I don't have somebody that can, will I be able to hire somebody? And then something you might wanna consider depending on your lifestyle is the prey. So what prey are you comfortable feeding? Are you comfortable feeding rodents, rats and mice? Are you comfortable feeding birds? Are you comfortable feeding frogs, lizards? Most snakes that are popular in the hobby are pretty good about eating rodents because we've acclimated them to do that. But there are some who are by nature more prone to eat lizards or frogs and you might find that they go off feed or they're picky with you and you have to use that as a food source. So before you decide what animal you wanna get, think about the types of prey that you would be comfortable feeding if you had to. Okay, so we're done with all the logistics. Now we have to think about our expectations. So we really have to look within and think, what do we want out of this animal? What are we expecting the animal to do? You need to think about these things because snakes are programmed to behave a certain way based on the ecological niche that they fill in the wild. Niche, niche, let me know in the comments below. You can't force someone to be something they're not. And that's a great life lesson in general, but we need to look at the natural behaviors of different snakes and find one that fits our expectations. So I'll throw some ideas out there. How big do you expect it to get? Do you expect it to be active? And when do you expect it to be active? During the day or during the night? Do you expect it to climb on branches? Do you expect it to burrow? Do you expect it to sit out in the open a lot where you can visibly see it? Do you expect it to be really docile and easy to handle, great with kids? Every species has different qualities that'll make it more or less desirable to different people. The fun thing is, because the world is such a big place, there are lots of animals that occupy the same sort of niche, niche, again, I have no idea, let me know. You have options, and then once you have a set of options based on your original preferences, you can narrow it down even further by certain things about certain species that might interest you, or nuances like, oh, I really like that color pattern of this species, so that's what you go with. So that's why I think the concept that a hognose snake or a corn snake or a ball python or a boa or any species is the best beginner snake or the best first snake or anything like that is a little bit disingenuous because it might be for you. It might not be for you. It depends on your budget, your lifestyle, and your expectations what you want and what you can manage. That's what determines what the best pet snake is for you. Maybe you go through this process and you decide, you know what, a ball python, that is exactly what I want. That's perfect, that's awesome. Get a ball python, it'll be great for you. Maybe you go down the list and you're like, it's a corn snake, That a corn snake ticks every box for me. Perfect, get a corn snake. But if you go down the list and a corn snake doesn't fit and a ball python doesn't fit, hognose snake doesn't fit, and an intermediate snake does, don't get a different species just because you think you have to practice with that before you get the snake you actually want. Do your research, reach out to people who do keep those animals, gather as much information as you can, and go for it. Now listen, there are limitations. There are some animals that are better suited for more experienced keepers. Maybe they don't thrive well in captivity. We haven't really figured out how to breed them yet. They're really picky feeders. Nobody can figure out what to feed them to get them to be consistent. There are also animals that are not gonna be great for beginners because of things like size, like giant snakes or venomous snakes, you know, animals that are just inherently a little bit more dangerous, harder to work with, harder to manage. Those are not gonna be great for beginners or most people really. So what is the best pet snake? I think the only person that can answer that is you after you've done your research and really thought about what you're looking for. And I'm curious to know if you already have snakes or have had them in the past, what your first snake was. Was it a good pet? And would you recommend that to other people? For me, it was a boa constrictor I got when I was 11. And I got it as a baby. We were able to grow up together. It was really easy to handle and it, it was fun to watch, did a lot of stuff and I loved it. And I think I would recommend it if it fits into what somebody's needing and wanting out of the snake. I wouldn't recommend it to everybody, but I would recommend it to some people based on what they want. So let me know what your experience has been. And once again, my name is Summer. Make sure you like and subscribe and hit that little notification bell for when I put up another video. And I will see you next time.